In today's news, BVI Taurus is to quarantine for four days once approved by Cabinet and the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force uncovered drug and traffic offenders. And Anguilla and Barbados placed on EU blacklist of tax havens. All this and more when 284 News returns. Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Viewers, welcome to 284 News. It is Wednesday, October 7th, 2020. So happy to welcome you to another edition of our newscast. My name is Javon Wilson. And I am Kyla Kinesha Forbes. In the middle of the week, Javon, we are coming straight out of the British Virgin Islands. Absolutely, viewers. Before we head into our newscast, uh, we knew, we know, sorry, of the government finally launching the Social Distancing Task Force. It's in full operation as of October 5th, of course, to enforce the provisions of the public health, uh, which is the COVID-19 control and suppression measures. We have just about uh, 43 officers throughout the territory, uh, Kyla, which will be responsible for the daily monitoring of designated areas in the territory, again, to ensure that businesses, as well as individuals, are in compliance with the preventative and health and safety measures, such as wearing uh, face masks uh, in public, maintaining uh, gathering sizes, physical right. distancing, and as well as the sanitization protocols and measures. We are also hearing uh, just overnight some breaking news coming out of government's consultation meeting with the stakeholders just last night within the tourist industry as it relates to the reopening protocols. Right. Kyla, we know for months uh, industry stakeholders have been calling for and really pushing for the protocols to be laid out via a plan. We do know that government has uh, sent out a schedule, uh, of course, in, 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 I'm sorry, government has sent out a schedule hoping to meet with uh, members of the industry, the hospitality industry, to ensure that we're all in a state of readiness. But one of the things coming out of last night's meeting, and that was, of course, October 6th with large hotels, uh, the owners of private islands and resorts, right. is the fact that tourists may be required to quarantine for four days right. come December 1st. In addition to that, uh, they will be required to test prior to arrival, upon arrival, and once that four-day quarantine uh, is finished, then they will be required to test again in order to be cleared for the novel coronavirus. Uh, so lots coming from the government as it relates to that, Kyla. Javon, we see, as you said, um, many meetings throughout this week and next week as the government is meeting with stakeholders. And what I like about it is that um, it is different areas within the tourism sector because as we know, it will take different protocols to really and truly make this Absolutely. work. So as you said, we're diving into that. But even before we dive in, um, this afternoon, I think everyone throughout the Virgin Islands felt that earthquake, um, Javon. And coming off of the scales, it was a 5.7 magnitude earthquake um, coming out of the Department of Disaster Management. Um, there is no advisory watch or warning for tsunami in the BVI and Puerto Rico. So that is actually a good thing. But yeah, it was, it was a bit scary as we felt that throughout the British Virgin Islands. Definitely scary, Kyla. We also know that Cabinet is due to meet today uh, to revise the current curfew order, yes. which is supposed to end today as well. So hopefully uh, sometime later on into the night, we will be getting an updated curfew order as it, relate, as it relates to whether the curfew has been uh, extended, further relaxed, or possibly removed Javon, um, all the way. I think um, these last few Wednesdays has been very daunting for the people of the Virgin Islands as we await these curfew announcements. It's been consecutive 
Wednesdays for quite some time now. So I know that the people of the Virgin Islands will be eagerly waiting to see what the fate looks like as it pertains to curfew. Absolutely, viewers. We're going to head straight into our newscast for today, beginning with those protocols. Now, Premier of the Virgin Islands, Honorable Andrew A. Four, revealed last night that come December 1st, 2020, incoming tourists may be required to provide test results prior and upon arrival in the BVI before quarantining for four days. This revelation, which is still subject to Cabinet's approval, was made by the Territory's leader during the government's consultation meeting on October 6th with the owners of resorts, private islands, and large hotels on the protocols for reopening. Now, based on the Premier's reveal, incoming visitors would be required to do a COVID-19 test five days prior to arrival and submit those results electronically via an app that the government is developing with IATA, which is the International Air Travel Association. Visitors will then download the app and register their COVID-19 tests five days before any bookings can be made. And upon arrival, visitors will be mandated to test again and then subjected to a four-day quarantine before being administered a final test to be cleared. Now, the Premier did not specify what course of action will be taken if a tourist tests positive for COVID-19. I mean, in, in addition to that, the proposed measures, uh, visitors will also be required to wear a risk ban that will alert officials of their whereabouts while in the BVI. Premier Foy said that this will ensure that visitors remain stationed while in quarantine, but added that wristbands must be worn until the vacation concludes. Tourism stakeholders will also need to foot additional operating costs associated with the required training of staff at HLSCC and reconfiguring operations for social distancing. Meanwhile, Kyla, just across the borders, uh, neighboring USVI has embraced more relaxed travel protocols, as we know. Once visitors uh, can provide a negative COVID-19 test upon arrival uh, there, they are free to move around as intended, thereby allowing travelers to uh, test, who test negative, of course, to bypass those quarantine requirements. Uh, in the failure to provide test results, the USVI visitors are now subject to a 14-day self-quarantine, right. or at least until the local COVID-19 test results return negative. Now, considering the USVI is the main port of entry into the BVI, many local persons are now worried that the locally proposed measures will serve as a deterrent for visitors. While these measures proposed by government, again, are yet to be approved by cabinet, they provide a guideline, Kyla, for the industry professionals, like we said, who have been anxiously waiting on and have been calling for reopening protocols for months. Right. The industry consultations also come on the heels of a petition being filed against the government recently, uh, just a few days ago, that some members of the business community condemning the government for failure to include stakeholders in these reopening discussions. The meetings, uh, which are scheduled to address various sectors, like you mentioned, Kyla, will run up until October 21st, 2020. Now, we know despite many countries still discouraging non-essential travel, and, you know, while questions continue to come up, Kyla, about uh, COVID-19 infection rates, um, those questions, trust me, a lot of persons are asking those questions. They're really concerned. Nevertheless, we do see that a lot of our tourism-reliant economies across the region, um, they're either probably would have already opened already or they're right. planning to reopen doors uh, to travelers as soon as possible in an effort to salvage whatever is left of their respective economies. Kyla, big news uh, coming out from that meeting last night. Again, viewers, we want to reiterate today that these decisions, even though proposed by government, is still subject to the approval of cabinet. So nothing has been stamped as yet. Nothing is concrete as yet. But nevertheless, uh, in response to some of the questions posed to the Premier of the Virgin Islands last night within that meeting, the Premier did say Say, the possibility exists that tourists will be required to quarantine for four days mm -hmm. and will be required to do at least three tests um, in transit to the BVI. So there's one prior to coming, there's one as soon as you get here, and upon completing that four day quarantine period, another test will be administered. Uh, so definitely a lot uh, coming from government as it relates to our reopening protocols, Kyla. Javon, I think this is what the 
um, people and stakeholders have been asking for for quite some time to be a part of the conversation. So we're definitely glad to see these meetings happening, of course. Um, one of the questions reaching our newsroom today, and I think it was very valid, was the fact that you know if persons are coming from um, countries with zero to let's say 5% positivity rate, does this make this person have to still quarantine? Uh, we've seen um, countries around the world do quarantine bubbles or um, travel corridors where you can travel from an island to an island depending on your positivity rate without quarantine. So it's all great um, questions. Also, the fact um, if a local is to travel home during this time, do they also have to quarantine um, as how a tourist will? So I think it's all great conversations. Um, I do think that the government asking these questions are the first step, but we do have to do this um, speedily because December 1st is right there and right upon us. I like that you mentioned uh, the, the question regarding locals and tourists because that's one of the things we've been pushing for locally to figure out uh, what are the requirements, what are the protocols that it relates to local right. persons traveling, Kyla. And what persons have said uh, upon the release of this information is that it works for business travel, it works for local travel because instead of having to quarantine for 14 days, you no, now have the opportunity to just quarantine for four days, which is a lot more practical considering, uh, for example, I may have family in Miami, but I simply do not have two weeks or three weeks to quarantine. So this works for local persons wanting to leave the territory, but somehow uh, it's a little stringent for persons coming. Based on the, re the reviews we've seen online, most persons uh, seem to have an issue with it. I do understand the government has an obligation to protect uh, the, the citizens of this territory and to ensure that we keep those numbers low. But a lot of persons are asking for us to go back to the drawing board. And again, nothing is concrete as yet. We, we still have to go to cabinet, so no, no need to raise an alarm, but we just yes. need to ensure that we're guided in the process. Most definitely. Now as we move on, Javon, we've been speaking a lot about corporate responsibility, and we're seeing our nonprofit organizations really stepping up amidst COVID-19. And yet again, we see where Dream Big Group, um, a nonprofit organization right here in our community, is calling on corporate BVI to help in their quest to help persons within our community who has been seriously affected since this COVID-19 pandemic. Now, Mr. Stefan D. McTavius, the president of Dream Big Group explained that we recognize that in order to prevail in difficult times as these, cohesion should exist between the business and the general communities. In a press release, the group stated their mission. It said, and I quote, to this end, our group will be partnering with volunteer organizations such as Family Support Network and the BVI Red Cross in hopes of reaching a larger cross-section of the population. It further stated, and I quote, this is a campaign that we are passionate about and hold dear to our hearts especially knowing the tremendous strain these groups are under since the territory's first lockdown in March 2020. The organization has realized that many have been affected by the pandemic in some way or fashion. They said, and I quote, it has left many of our friends, family, and neighbors in financial difficulty and uncertainty of what the future holds, unable to meet their obligations such as food, rent, electricity, and child expenses due to layoffs. Some are forced to choose which expense to address, for example, providing to, for their family or paying the utilities. End quote. Thus far, a few businesses has really stepped up to the plate, Javon, and partnered with this organization to make this initiative possible. Businesses such as A Value Supermarket, Manual Reef Supermarket, House of Luxury, and Bobby's Supermarket. And Javon, really and truly, this is a worthy cause, and we see where this organization is calling on corporate BVI to partner with them to be such a to be a helping hand for the persons out there who are really struggling. Um, they they mentioned the lockdown in March 2020, and I think sometimes we might forget that persons are still 
struggling Javon. Um, many persons, persons within the tourism sector and many sectors across the BVI are still trying to catch themselves, are still out of a job. And as it said, um, really having to decide what is important to pay now and what to pay later. So we're really hoping and we're calling on corporate BVI to step up to the plate as um, just to help the community. Absolutely. Kind of the reality is um, the economic fallout from COVID-19 has been huge across the board in the BVI. We've seen big businesses suffer. So you could only be, you, you know, we could only begin to imagine how the average common man yeah. is affected uh, by the, the ramifications of this virus. And it has been really hard. It's been a real struggle. We've heard from the Family Support Network. Uh, we've heard that from them, they're, they're saying that numbers have tripled. So they're accustomed to maybe 30 persons, 20 persons per day. That number has tripled over the last few months. Uh, I just remember maybe just a few weeks ago, passing that area and seeing the lines going around the corner. Yeah. And at that time we had a, a restricted curfew. So many persons having to leave without receiving any sort of help. So it's been it's been a really challenging time. We also saw Dr. Jarecki under the Guana Fund uh, supplying 400 to 500 persons with meals on a daily basis. So this is the time for corporate BVI to do as much as they can for the community. Uh, it's It's been a real struggle for so many people. And it's just so heartwarming to see persons like Stefan and other publicly spirited, sorry, public spirited persons within the community coming forward and saying, hey, we are ready to do our part. So yes. Really now, happy. Javon, viewers, um, dengue is a conversation as we are, you know, in the COVID-19 season. Dengue has not gone anywhere and we're starting fogging in the BVI to prevent the spread of this um, this disease. So you don't want to miss this. We have a story on this, but this is 284 News and we'll be right back. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, just like uh, Kyla mentioned before the break, we have some concerns re regarding dengue. Now, the Environmental Health Division's vector teams will begin fogging. Uh, as a matter of fact, would have already begun, uh, began fogging operations this week to address the high level of mosquito infestation and increase in dengue cases reported in the British Virgin Islands. Deputy Environmental Health Officer Ms. Henrietta Alexander stated that the recent infestation is due to the territory receiving a substantial amount of rainfall over several weeks, which have resulted in the rapid reproduction of adult mosquitoes causing significant discomfort to residents. She explained that the fogging or spraying of adult mosquitoes is called for when the biting population of mosquitoes have reached critical levels. Fogging operations will take place in the following communities. We have East and Greenland that happened yesterday. Uh, we have Purcell Estate today, Wednesday, Longbush Lower Estate on Thursday. On October 8th, we have Sea Cows Bay. On Friday, October 9th, fogging will take place. Um, Sorry, territory-wide uh, fogging will take place from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. on the scheduled days until all areas are completed. Residents will be advised when fogging will be conducted in the morning and any cancellation if there is any rain or extremely high winds. Persons with respiratory illnesses, and this is very important, particularly persons who are asthmatics, are advised to leave the areas being fogged for at least an hour as it can cause discomfort. The public is also reminded that fogging will provide only temporary relief for mosquitoes as householders and property owners are to remain vigilant in preventing mosquitoes from breeding in stagnant water around their homes and businesses by conducting weekly inspections. Kyla, like you said, um, while we're in the midst of a pandemic, uh, you know, dengue still is up and around. Uh, we do know across the region uh, in neighboring 
St. Vincent, we see uh, yeah. lots of students being infected with this disease, dengue. Um, what, I think students are now required to wear long sleeve uh, clothing to, to get back into school simply because of the scare over there in St. Vincent. And like you said, uh, despite we're going through a pandemic, we still have to pay attention to the other ills around the community and to ensure that we are in a state of readiness, but also that we are prepared and trying our best to eradicate the presence in our community. Kyla. Javon, mosquitoes. I, I have uh, I have a special <laughs> dislike for mosquitoes, but um, really and truly, I think um, just the men mentioning the fact that do what we can mm -hmm. to kind of, as you said, eradicate um, the, the, the feeding and the breeding of mosquitoes. Um, of course, we've been having a lot of rain um, um, recently. So looking around your property, making sure that no um, captured water is just there and still so because that is a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So staying vigilant and making sure that you're doing what you can to, um, to kind of curb the, the breeding of mosquitoes would definitely help um, the community. So Absolutely. as we move on, the European Union has added Anguilla and Barbados to its blacklist of tax havens. Now, Javon, just a few months ago in actually February 2020, the BVI was upgraded to the whitelist status. This definitely um, indicates that the BVI as a jurisdiction was fully cooperative with tax Jurist, as a tax jurisdiction that is observing all of the tax good governance standards. So this is very good for the BVI, but not so much for the neighboring islands over in Anguilla and Barbados. Now, countries on the EU blacklist of tax havens are deemed to be non-cooperative um, jurisdictions that are not compliant with good governance standards. Countries on the blacklist face damage to their reputation, higher scrutiny in their financial transactions, and risk of losing EU funds. There are now 12 countries on the EU's blacklist, that is the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, Anguilla, Barbados, Fiji, Guam, Panama, Trinidad and Tobago, and a few others, Javon. And we see where, you know, as Anguilla and Barbados have been added to the list, Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia um, Motley, she voiced her disapproval at the decision by the European Union to list Barbados and Anguilla as non-cooperative jurisdictions for tax purposes. This was reported by Barbados Advocate Online. In a statement issued just yesterday, the Prime Minister insists that the treatment was, and I quote, unjust and disproportionate. She made the point while indicating that Barbados is being penalized for being partially compliant in only th three of the 10 essential elements of the OECD's standards, which include availability of ownership and identity information, as well as accounting information, and the quality and timeliness of its response to requests for, from overseas tax authorities for tax information on Barbados residents' taxpayers. With that in mind, she said that the Global Forum rated Barbados as compliant in the remaining seven of its essential elements. So we see where in that testing, Javon, Barbados um, basically was compliant in seven out of the 11 um, elements. So we see where Prime Minister Motley is definitely not um, very happy with this blacklisting. She said, and I quote, the EU's action is even more apprehensive when it is recognized that the matters that largely lead to this listing have been remedied in the last 20 months. The government of Barbados, since um, assuming office, has amended over 40 pieces of legislation, ensured that requests for exchange of information from other jurisdictions are appropriately answered in accordance with the law, conducting audits and reviews of the corporate and trust services providers and has ensured that up-to-date and relevant beneficial ownership information is properly maintained and accessible by the authorities. 
Despite all that, she charged that the EU has chosen to ignore all the work that has been done by the government of Barbados to remedy deficiencies that exist between 2015 and 2018 under a previous administration. Prime Minister Mia Motley, she lamented that in normal times, such might be considered as bullying at worst and at best, actions to preserve the competitiveness of the EU. But she said it is compounded by the fact that we are in the middle of a global pandemic where Barbados GDP is likely to contract by more than 15% and therefore it is an unconscionable um, action and a crime against the people of two of the smallest and most vulnerable nations. Now, Javon, we see where Prime Minister Mia Motley, she is not happy whatsoever. And she is seeing that, you know, basically they tried their best. They, they listened and they incorporated and they changed some legislation. And here they were actually added to the blacklist. And that's a pretty dangerous thing, like uh, Prime Minister Mia Motley said, um, especially in these times, Kyla. Um, it's important that they work towards uh, remedying these deficiencies because um, in this time, especially within this pandemic, funding and borrowing is so critical to rebooting a lot yeah. of the economies across the region. We do know Barbados for sure is very tourism reliant. Even Anguilla, so I think I think the tourism is the lifeline of the economies across the region. So it's a it's a very dangerous precedent to set. Um, and we do know that you know when the BVI was even being considered on that list, it was it was it sent a really bad taste. Especially Yep. Uh, to the to the fact that we have such a successful financial services sector and wanting to be in compliance with those international standards. So at this point, I do feel for Barbados as well as Anguilla. I think um, smaller nations feel as though they are somewhat bullied by the bigger nations as it pertains to um, blacklisting and whitelisting and kind of um, basically taking them out of the competition. And they definitely and think we've had that similar it's not sentiments fair. here too. Yeah, most definitely. All right, viewers, still ahead, uh, the Royal Virgin Islands has uncovered a few drug and traffic offenders. We want to touch on that as soon as we return from this commercial break. Stick with us. The wind. Oh! What is the I'm freaking out. I'm His time. Oh. Eight more Coming to you live and direct from the beautiful British Virgin Islands. What's poppin', what's really good, what's happening, what's happening, what's up? Viewers, welcome back to 284 News. Now, coming out of the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force, several serious traffic-related offenses and unlawful drug possession charges were laid by the force during uh, stop and searches within the last two months. The force reported the results of several operations conducted during the months of September and October. Now, during the month of September, one male was charged with reckless driving and unlawful possession of a controlled drug. Another male was charged for reckless driving, driving when not covered by insurance, failing to apply for change of ownership of vehicle, driving without a rear license plate, failing to stop at the sound of a siren, and driving an unlicensed vehicle. At the end of September, one male was charged for reckless driving. And viewers, the charges continue. Uh, of course, all will be listed in detail via our website, which is 284media.com. But kind of we see the, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force really busy at work. We have been seeing the confiscations. We have been seeing them going after, especially the motorcycle riders. Yeah. And I think the, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is really clamping down on, on a lot of the illegal activities within the territory. Javon, I said it some weeks ago, and, and that still stands where we see where, as you said, the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force is definitely out there, and we do want to commend them for the work that they are doing. Um, of course, it could not be easy, but we do want to thank them. But viewers, of course, that is it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to like us on Facebook at 284 Media and 284 BVI on Instagram as well as Twitter. I am Kyla Kenesha Forbes.
and my name is Javon Wilson. Remember to check us later on tonight for the update from government as yeah. cabinet is uh, probably wrapping up their meeting as it as it is right now to decide on whether we'll have a curfew or not going but forward. Might... But for now, yeah. viewers, uh, that is all. My name is Javon Wilson, and I just want to thank you so much for joining us. Bye. Take care.